Okay, I've just discussed and defined the second principle, which was defined as body stabilization. The third principle that we're going to talk about here is very similar to body stabilization, and it's, and it's defined as called the line of force principle. Now, this is another principle that is often neglected in MMA striking training. Okay, very important principle to understand, and it actually works in conjunction with body stabilization. Okay, so now you've got your body stabilized for a specific strike in here. What's important is that your trajectory of your strike, again, any technique, whether it's linear or circular, okay, that your forearm or your limb takes the, the specific functional trajectory for a strike or an energy beat to have the most optimal effect. Okay, the optimal uh, leverage. Okay, so the line of force principles is designed or is defined as the specific functional trajectory for a target. Okay, so this is what I've kind of learned and discovered over the years of training in here and stripping out any particular style that says otherwise in here, looking at the specific best way. So this is where engineering comes in, not styles or, you know, who did this a long time ago or whatnot. You know, I don't care doesn't matter what Bruce Lee said a long time ago, whatnot. Things have changed, all right, and things that people have learned and, and studied things more, okay? So, the line of force principle would be if we took the same concept, again, again, he's going to brace himself in here, so it works really well and, you know, with somebody who, uh, something that you can resist against. Maybe a relatively a heavy bag, but I like to do it with a person. And what we're going to do is... Is he puts his hand up in here, I'm going to take the, this punch again and put it out here. So I'm going to get my body stabilized in here like this. Okay. So find your stabilization point. If you have to check it again in here, he's going to press against you. And your partner's going to stabilize against himself in the same direction. The same, right? So the line of force for this technique, for this punch in here, right, for this direction, is coming right off my shoulder, okay, right through my form. It's almost like I've got a laser pointer right here, and I'm pointing right at you, right at the camera, like this, okay? So it's almost like I'm training a stamp or a dagger in here. Now, people are going to have a lot of different ideas about this, but if you really test this, in which I have, you're going to find that there's one exact specific path, best path, for every strike to take that's going to give you the most functional leverage, okay? Yes, there are variations on this theme, on every technique, right? But the one you're trying to find the optimal first. In other, words, in other words, what is the exact biomechanics that's going to make this strike have the most leverage, okay, in application? So, he puts his hand out here, I stabilize against it. Now, stabilize at the end of the punch. This is where the end of the punch is. Now, here's how you work the line of force drill. What I'm going to do is he's going to stay right there, and I'm going to actually walk up and start the punch from the beginning of the punch. In other words, my guard is here, okay? The punch starts here, it's gotta come up like this. So my form, okay, my wrist has to be centered behind the knuckles, the wrist and elbow have to be in line like this. So I'm here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press against him and he's gonna let me push back in the line that I need to take. So he's not going to resist me a whole lot, but he's going to let me press. Okay, now push against me in here. Okay, push back. All right, resist harder. See, I can press and drive him back, and my body's completely anchored in here. Okay, so let's kind of do it from this angle in here like this. Okay, so again, I'm going to kind of start from here. This is where I'm going to initiate the technique, right, once my arm is in this line in here. And I'm stabilizing the ground. You can just use your other arm up here, like in a defense or balance. And I'm going to push in the proper line of force in here like this. And if I'm doing it correctly, all right, resist me harder, I, I can drive him back without falling off balance. You notice I'm not leaning on it. So let me show you what would be a wrong way. Let's say, that I'm, let's say that I'm in the proper line of force, but I'm leaning on the guy. And as I press against him, he pulls away real fast. Pull away, pull away. And I, this happens. Okay, so I might be in the proper line of force in here. Okay, but my body is too far outside its base. In other words, I'm relying on him to support my weight. That'd be you like that'd be like you hitting a heavy bag. Okay, put your hand back up in here. That'd be like you hitting a heavy bag and you're going like this. Okay, so you're completely out of position. That is that is unrealistic and not effective. All right. So again, any technique you put <clears throat> your body stabilized and you just start the drill 
in close like this, okay? So what would a hook be like, right? If I was here again, and I started the hook here, all right, get my body stabilized, and he's just gonna let me, with some small resistance, push in the line of force in here. And I push back, see I can stabilize, push, let me push again, all right, push again. See, I can stabilize against that easily, and I'm not having to lean or overcompensate my body, right? So again, if my elbow was down, okay, technically the line of force for this punch should be going this way. I should be throwing like a 45 uppercut, but I'm trying to get my hook to come around this way and deliver, go, come along this line in here. So line of force is this way. So if I'm like this, and I try to push against him, okay, resist me, I can't move him. Okay, and therefore, if he pushes into me, push, I, I start to destabilize, or a, a part of my body starts to destabilize. Okay, so that is why it's important to, to understand what the line of force is for any given technique. Right? Now, certain techniques, like a backhand hand or a hammer fist, the line of force is different because you don't have the skeletal muscular structure behind the technique, like, like straight punch, like jabs and crosses in here. Right? Those are more like driving type punches, right? like a stomping type kick. That's a very driving type punch. So your body's behind the hit. A hook, your body is kind of behind the hit, not so much in here. Right? So it's really important that your whole body be behind the hit and be really, boom, stabilized on that point of impact in here like this. Right? Whether it's a punch or whether it's a push in here, very, very important. Okay? So again, what you want to practice in your, in your drilling is practice finding the line of force for any given technique that you do. Right? And practice stabilizing against that energy. Okay? And it does not matter how much you weigh. A 130 pound person can do it, a 230 pound person can do it, a male or female can do it. Think of it like weightlifting. Right? So when you bench press, when you do a bench press in here, if you take a barbell or a dumbbell, right, and try to press, a, let's say dumbbells because they can move independently. Right? If you lay on your back and do dumbbell pressing, or maybe a push up, put your hands your arms in some awkward position, like on the center of your body, or your arms up in here, right, like this. That would be like the same thing, put your hand back up, it's like swatting with a punch like this. As soon as I make contact, doing right, it bounces off in here, and I don't have the fork knockout that I want, because guess what, there's no leverage between here, because I'm not in the line of force. And that's one of the major problems in delivering, when, you know, particularly he's trying to throw boxing type strikes in MMA. It's because they're so focused on trying to hit perfectly out here, they're trying to do this weird, weird stuff that's very kind of methodical and unnatural, is that what happens is like, you know, I can, I can, I can hit out here like this pretty fast, but when he steps in, step in, right, I hit like this, look at my body, it's out of alignment, or I hit like this, right? So let, let's kind of see that again. So I step, step in, right, and I hit like this in here, right, and my... My, I don't. I'm not. I don't have my skeletal structure kind of, you know, almost locked out. So therefore, the four, the punch is weak, right? The punch is weak right here, right? That's why I, when people keep their elbow down and try to throw a punch like this in here, I say that's not natural. And you don't. No one ever does that in a real fight. I get to see a, a real fighter, a fighter sit here and keep their elbow down and do stuff like this, or their spine is straight in here like this. That is not natural to the, how the human body moves, and it's natural. And it's, you know, kind of its characteristics or environment, okay? So you see here the punches like this in here, and here's the target, and I go bonk, and I hit here like this, okay? In order for me to hit strong, okay, through the entire range of motion, I have to follow the line of force right from, right from the beginning in here like that, okay? So that is a definition of the line of force principle, okay, in conjunction with body stabilization. So you want to practice that and work on that until you get every strike mastered to where you know exactly where that strike needs to be delivered from the point of conception to the point of its destination. Let's go on to the next principle.